Hi, I'm Leon Rook, and I will be reading today from my new short story collection, The Last Shot. The story I will be reading is entitled The Legend of the Flaming Moths, a story set in perhaps a small Mexican village. Uh, well, the origins of this story has to do with the fact that for many decades, Wherever I've lived, I've been pursued by moths, uh, not your clothing moth, but the mealy mouth moth, the food moth, the flower moth. They, these moths followed me from our house in Victoria. We moved to Guelph and Eden Mills. These moths followed us there. We moved to Winnipeg, the moths came with us. From Winnipeg, they followed us to another house in here in Toronto. So they've been something of a plague for all of this while and um, greatly irrit uh, irritating to me personally. So I've had this warfare and out of that warfare came this story, the legend of the flaming moths. One day the village was invaded by moths. They filled the sky with thunder, so numerous were they. They darkened the earth. But it was the siesta hour, and few saw them coming. When the villagers awakened, the work of the moths already was complete. Every sleeper awakened naked. Every stitch of cloth had been consumed by the rapacious moths. The moths swarmed into every house and ate not only the raiment of every sleeper, but every blanket and sheet, the very stuffings from every bed. They consumed every curtain, every rug, the covers and stuffing of every sofa and chair. They probed to the depths of every closet, drawer, box, or hamper where cloth of any kind was stored. Every mop and dish rag and hat and hat band, and even the cloth linings of every shoe, every bean and rice and massive bag devoured, devoured. In the church, they feasted upon the robes, draping the soulful Madonnas, and the Madonnas' hair, and the capes adorning every saint, large and small. They ate the loincloth of the pa plaster of Paris, Christ on the cross, and devoured his cloth sandals, and in mistaken fury, the very paint on his toenails. The scarlet cushions where worshippers knelt were devoured, as were the choir frocks and priest's robes, every ab cassock, supplice, and chasuble, every veil, the strings of a thousand prayer beads, devoured, devoured, and the red carpets in the apse, the golden hangings in the nave, every linen sack containing consecrated bread, devoured, devoured. Political signs draped over village walls and fluttering from municipal buildings. The very flags and flagpoles on the flagpoles. Every awning, every piece of rotted rag in a ditch or snagged within the branches of trees. Mannequins and shop windows. The carpets beneath their gnawed feet. Every bolt of cloth on every shelf. Every scrap of cloth in every automobile. The the very threads on the rubber tires, gunny sacks containing spices, seed, and every hemp rope, even those tying wood or clay pots to grazing donkeys, all devoured, as were the donkeys' tails. Fishermen out on the lake casting their butterfly nets had these consumed down to their fingernails, and when the nets were no more, the gourmandizing moths stripped the astonished men naked in a matter of seconds. Devour, devour, oh, those gluttonous, rampaging moths. Everywhere one looked, a naked person was darting for cover repeating what one heard, that this nakedness signaled the end of the world, that it was God's 
punishment on this modern day village of Sodom and Gomorrah, while others strutted about pridefully, arguing that here was the Garden of Eden reconstituted, the moss, not a plague, but a blessing, a superlative act of a god who had finally come to his senses. Feel the sun, they shouted. Look how beautiful. And indeed, as quickly as one could speak the idea, a naked band struck up their music in the pavilion, and naked dancers assembled by the hundreds, one wine barrel rolling away empty as yet another full casket took its place over the cobblestone streets, over the rooftops, and in every courtyard lay moths by the thousandfold, immobile or sluggish of movement, their stomachs distended, bits of fluff exuding from their mouths, crawling over each other, struggling towards flight after this prodigious engorgement, their legs folding, their bodies weaving, collapsing. Villagers not at the impromptu fiesta were busy with rake and shovel, sweeping the moths into gigantic piles, then dousing on gasoline to set these countless piles afire. Out of the blazing stacks rose moths by the thousands, beating their wings above the flames, some succeeding, others falling back into the fire to make sizzling, popping sounds. The night sky at last, a swarm with billions of these creatures beating, forming pools of fire, the wings of flame, fire which possessed the thickness of syrup, and all the time climbing into the heavens until their bodies popped and sizzled also, then still ablaze, plummeting back to earth with all the bountiful essence of falling stars. Nothing like it had ever been seen. And as a boy, standing naked in the family garden, holding my mother's hand, my little stiffened penis bobbing in the night air, I felt for the first time what a glory it was to be alive in such a dazzling, incomparably fantastic world.